Hi guys, welcome again. Um, like I said last week, um, one of the things I wanted to do was um, a. I found a online um, Acorn Electron emulator, um, and uh, when I had a play about with it, it was quite interesting how um, I just jumped back into that space of remembering. And again, like I said before, I was never a very good programmer, but just the concepts of programming in basic and you forget the weirdness um, of what it was like to edit a program back then, if I can put it that way. Um, let's not ramble too much. Let's just jump into it. Um, like I say, I had a, um, an Acorn Electron back in the day. Uh, and I also had uh, at school, obviously, everybody was running um, BBC micros in classrooms and stuff like that. I didn't go to a particularly good school. So literally, it was uh, the only room that had computers was the computer labs. Some of the design labs eventually had one computer in them. Um, and I got to using a BBC micro to, pro to program and control Lego models, which was pretty cool. Um, that was towards the end of my, my um, secondary school life. Um, but other than that, they were only, only in the computer room um, and there wasn't enough for one per student at all. So you had to share, you had to double up um, and the teachers didn't really know what to do with them uh, a lot of the time. So the basic that I learned was extremely basic, shall we put it that way. Um, and the principles of uh, programming were fairly limited. I've always remembered garbage in, garbage out. That was the first thing I was ever taught and probably the last thing I'll ever remember. Uh, lesson for life, maybe. But anyway, look, I found this online emulator. Um, you can't see because it's behind my thing, but I'll put the link in the description. But this is a BBC dot godbolt dot org um it does give you a warning about it being an unsafe web, uh, website because it doesn't have a certificate it isn't https it's only http um but my, i have no problem going there i went there at work and i've, I've been there um on my computer at home um you can load programs you can see up the top there you've got you can load cassettes and stuff so there's preloaded stuff haven't really toyed that much about it i was just interested in, you know going back to and another link I'll put in the description and in the, the comments as well is a link to one of the latest videos by Retro Man Cave. Love his stuff. Um, keep it up, mate. Um, but um, it's about the switch and how this guy, oh, I forget, is it called Swerve? 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 Maybe? Oh, can't remember. Um, but about how somebody's developed a programming language um, and a games creation package essentially for the Nintendo Switch um, so that it can be like it was in our day where you turn on a computer and yes, you could play games on it or you could just start making your own stuff and that's what they've tried to do with that package. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Nintendo, because I'll put the links in the thing. Nintendo Switch programming. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, it's terrible how you can't remember stuff these days. Programming. Um, and just see if it comes up. Uh, Fuse, Fuse, that was it. Fuse. So sorry about that. It was it was Fuse. Um, but do 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 watch that. I'll I'll link to the the video that I that I remember seeing, which I'm pretty sure it was Retro Man Cave. Um, but do look into, into that because that's sort of the modern equivalent of what we had back in the day. We just uh, turn on a system. There's a cat trying to jump in a box outside my window. Um, but you know, that's how it was. We turn on the computer, this is what it would look like. So this is what my Acorn Electron would have looked like as well, um, or a BBC Micro or whatever. Um, and you know, you turned it on at home, it was plugged into a television at school, it was plugged into monitors. And yes, the next thing I could do would be to, in fact, it was chain, I remember, for the Electron. Um, and to then start pressing play on my cassette and load something, or you could just start programming your own thing here. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do and have a bit of a play about with um, what I learned. So I'll do what I did the other day. So yes, I mean, obviously the first thing you tend to do, and this is what I used to do in shops. You go into a shop, you jump on the computer and you do this and you run away and all the shop assistants would go, well, how do I stop that? Because they didn't think to, you know, just turn it off and on again or press escape. But you know, the, the, the one we all we all remember was let's print, you know, I, I, I always just put my name is Chris, funnily enough. Um, but the other one would be hello world. Probably shouldn't have put my name is Chris because then I'm instantly admitting that I was the culprit for hijacking their machines. Oh well. Um, and then, you know, you go, 
um, go to 10, very simple concept of programming. So it's going by line numbers and I'm forcing it to go back to the first line. When it's finished processing the, the first line, the next thing it will do will go back to the start. And then, so if I run that, obviously it's just gonna go in a loop. There you go, that's what most of us did. Um, how do I reboot this thing? So I just want to start fresh. Oh, it doesn't matter because I'll overwrite. And that's the funny thing. I mean, A, how do I get my program back? <laughs> and these are the things I did. I didn't Google anything. I purposely didn't Google anything. It's like, can I remember how do you do this? And I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure uh, I, I always remember how to clear the screen because that's something we use in lots of different systems, the so CLS. Um, we clear the screen. Um, but where's your program? Where, where, where is your program? How do you remember what you've written before? And it's list. Um, so there you go. So remembering those little things is a bit crazy. Now, how do I edit? Because you can't actually, well, you can, but you're not really, you're just moving a cursor around. I'm not overwriting another line if I if I move that cursor around. Um, so that's not how I edit my program. So to edit line 10, well, I type it again. And, and when you start doing this again, you go, really, that's what we did? It would have taken forever to program anything because... Every time you've noticed a mistake in a line, you have to type the whole line again, and that's just inviting another mistake. Well, yes, it was. <laughs> that's that's what we did. Um, so now you know, I'm going to go 10, and I'm actually going to make the first line of my program, CLS. Um, so all it's going to do is clear the screen. And if I wanted a line between those lines, obviously I've got no room for a print statement now. Um, well, I can actually do numbers in between, which is 15. My wife's looking at me like I'm weird. It's not locked. Um, so if I wanted to put something in between there, then I would do that. And now I've got hello world there. Oh, I've got an Australian keyboard, so that's why I keep hitting the wrong key. Um, and now it's going to do line 10, then line 15, then line 20. So it's going to clear the screen, print that, and then it's actually just going to flash. That's what it's going to do because line 10 is, um, is clear the screen. So in theory, this will just flash. Let's have a look. There we go. So that's all that'll do. Let's escape that. Okay, and then you started messing about with variables. Now, I know like Java and that and Pascal and Cobol, you declare var and, and whatever. You could just make stuff, but I'm just gonna go through what I did the other day when I was having a play about and just trying to bring it all back into my memory. And it's amazing, I didn't really make any mistakes. Um, but this is based on what I remember being taught in school, uh, which is what we did. So excuse the simplic simplicity of the program. Um, I really do want to just restart this whole thing, actually, just so I'm starting clean. So bear with me. I do I do apologize. I'm just going to refresh the page um, and assume that's going to reboot the machine. I'm sure it will. Yeah, there we go. There's, there probably will. Oh, there we go. Reset. I've got reset. Soft reset, hard reset. So I could have done that. So... Let's do it how uh, I wanted to do it. So I'm going to start with clearing the screen and then I'm going to ask a question. So to ask a question, um, I'm going to go input. Now this works the same as a print statement. So anything I put in between my speech marks um, will be printed on the screen just like it was with the print statement. Um, but I can also then declare a variable at the end of it and whatever the, it's going to invite a user input. So I'm going to go, hello, um, not how are you, what is your name? And I'm going to declare that as name dollar. And again, I didn't need to look any of this up. I just remembered it that if it's a number, it doesn't have a dollar. If it is a, um, a text input, then it has a dollar. So I don't know how I remember this stuff. I just do. Um, oh, did I just run that? Ah, oh, notice my deliberate mistake. Let's just do this all again. That's just a line, so it just ran straight away because I didn't type in 20 <laughs> inputs. Because of course we don't use line numbers really these days. Um, input, hello. Name and we'll declare name dollar. Okay, and then I want to do what appeared when back in the day when you did this, it was like, oh, this is so cool because the user is having an input into the conversation because I'm going to call on that variable in my next question. So I'm going to go 30, 
um, print, and then I'm going to go hello, and I'm going to leave a space, and then name dollar, and then I think I can just do more of these, can I? I know, we'll try it in a minute. I can't remember if, can't remember if I could do it this way. Um, hello, name dollar, and then I would have a full stop there. That's where I would have the full stop. Um, nice too, it's a very polite program. Me too, God, if you're coding AI this way, it'd be take forever, wouldn't it? Um, there we go. Let's, let's just give that a quick run and see if that works. So it should, hello, what is your name? And it's waiting for me to do something. So I'll put my name in, it's Chris. Hello, Chris, nice to meet you. So it's pulling my name from my initial input. If I go, if I run that again, hello, what is your name? Arseface, then it's gonna assume my name is Arseface. So there we go. Um, and until that is rerun, the variable in the system for name is our space. Anyway, um, so let's just bring our program back up. Nice. Um, and now let's do um, some maths because that's always what we like to do on a Saturday um, morning if you're watching this, if I upload this today. Or a Saturday afternoon if this happens at some other time. Saturday afternoon for me because this is when I'm doing it because I'm still in Australia. So... Um, Let's go, input, uh. how old are you? Probably uh, put a question mark there. How old are you? And we'll call that age dollar. No, nope, we'll call it age. Then off the back of that, now, what year is it? Hmm. Now that's the thing, because obviously this machine wouldn't have had a date stored in it. I want to do a bit of math here. What year was the Acon Electron? I'm thinking 83. I'm just going to cheat on that. I do apologize, because um, I can't remember. Acorn. Electron release, release date, 83, there we go. I did look it up the other day, but I also kind of forgot it. And so that was a combination of probably what I looked up the other day. But also, you know, in your head, you kind of have these sort of landmarks of, of you know, well, when was it? What stage was I at school? Blah, 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 blah. And you just sort of call back on those things in a microsecond and make a punt take a punt um okay so it was 83 1983 so i'm actually going to get this system to ask what the date is at the start so um let's go 15 input um and let's make this a bit comical now i've oh where's my thing no it's not that one oh, it's not that one Stupid differences in keyboards. I'm looking at an Australian keyboard, trying to bring up a, no. There's no punctuation today. Um, trying to think of a UK keyboard from 1983. Um, I've, well, I've been a long time. What year is it? There we go. You can kind of see where I'm going with this, I'm sure. All right, so we're asking what year it is right at the beginning, and we're going to go, we're going to call that, oh, we'll call it year dollar. No, we'll call it year, because it's a number, because we need to do maths with it, okay? Can't do maths if I, if I give it a dollar value. So, at line 40, we're asked to see how messy it gets, because like, <laughs> and you just have to keep in your head. I know I've just, the last thing I've written is, is that line, but actually I know that's actually going to occur as soon as we clear the screen because it's going to go, um, it's going to go here. Um, of course, you wouldn't have had a mouse on one of these either, um, but yeah, it's going to happen after ten. Is this thing is it's going to happen? So that's all good. So then I will go. Um, okay, what year is it? So I've asked what year it is. Now I've asked what age it is. 
So based on their age, I want to then, okay, so I want an if statement. So 40, 50, if, let's have a think about this. So let's just, and you must excuse me because there's, there's a thing I have, I don't know if anybody else suffers this, doing simple maths in front of others becomes impossible. So what I'm going to just do is um, bring up, I thought I had a keyboard a calculator. I thought I had a calculator button on this keyboard, but I don't. There we go. Um, so what did I say, 1983. Um, well, the year is, oh no, because you have to take it off the year. Sorry, sorry, okay. Let me just have a think about this then. So if, ah, oh, so I need to do, I need to do, I need to set a value. So I'm going to set, what shall I call this value? I'm just gonna call it calc, because I don't know what else to call it right now. So calc is going to equal, Calc is going to equal, uh, calc equals, uh, where's equals on this? There equals, calc equals year minus 1980. Oh, doesn't like my, maybe numlock was off. 19, no, it doesn't. 19, it doesn't like my numeric keyboard, keypad. 1983. And that's basically giving us the difference. So that's giving us the age, regardless of what year it is. Obviously, we're in 2019, but regardless of the year um, that this program is run, uh, it's never ever going to be run after today, let's face it, but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, it's it's going to give us the difference between the two. Essentially, it's going to give us the age of the acorn electron. In fact, that would be a better name for it, wouldn't it? That would be a better name for it. Um, we'll call it... Um, Uh, we'll call it elect age because you don't want to make these variables too long um, because obviously if you have to retype them to call on them you're gonna to have to retype the whole thing out again and that just gets ugly so electron age um, equals year minus 1983 or essentially oh, tried to use the numeric keyboard again 1983 or essentially, it's not really 1983, it's 1983. Well, it's the same thing, obviously, but you know, as a, as a pure, pure number. A lek age just looks like I'm a bad speller, bad speller. Um, and I just wanna quickly check that before we go any further, that that actually works. Um, I'm going to go, I'm just gonna go 60. In fact, I should be able to run it now. I should be able to go print elect age to see the value of elect age. Oh no, because I don't have a value for year, do I? So let's just run it um, just quickly. What year is it? It's 2019. Oh, try using the keyboard again. 2019. Oh, I should take out that hello statement. Um, what is your name? My name is Chris. Nice to meet you. How old are you? Well, I am I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you exactly how old I am, actually. Um, I'm going to lie. What, what age shall I put in? Um, uh, let's, let's just put in a round, a round number. Right, so now I've got a value in the system. I should be able to go print, print um, elect age. It's 36. Okay, beautiful. So that so that works. That and I, seriously, when I I didn't go this way when I started playing with this the other day, but I wanted to go, do a bit different. Um, I was just basing it off um, it being two thousand and nineteen. But I thought it'd be cool if this was programmed in such a way that it wouldn't matter what year the program was running; it would always work. So we need to establish what the date is, what the year is that we're dealing with, and that's what we've done there. All right, let's relist this and see what we've got. Another cool thing you can do. Watch this. So I've got 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, I might need to put something in between 10 and 15. I'm running out of lines there at some point, maybe. Um, so let's actually do renum. Oh. 
I swear that worked the other day. I swear that worked. I swear I tried that. Renum. The definition of insanity. Renumber. Nope. Renumber. Okay. It's renumber. Okay. I thought it was renum. Um, somebody tell me in the comments if you know a system where renum works. I swear I tried renum the other day and it worked. Anyway, it's definitely this same website. Well, it looks the same anyway. Uh, maybe this is the version where renum doesn't work and there's viruses. Who knows? Uh, but right. Okay, so that's cool. So nice to meet you. Uh, it's also getting our age. Okay. Uh, I want to clean up that um, that second hello because I sort of got hello name. Nice to meet you. That's fine. Well, I've been asleep for a long time. What year is it? And then it's saying hello. That doesn't make sense. Just saying I'm being very fussy, really here, aren't I? But let, let's just let's just fix it up. Thirty. In, so now notice I've got to retype that entire line to edit it. Input. I don't want hello. I just want what is your name and I need to make sure I give that name dollar otherwise I mess up all the other work I've done okay good right so now we go um, let's just list that so I can see things in order how old are you okay so now on the back of that we are going to go 70, print, oh no, 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 so, so now I want an if statement based on, based on some things, based on whether or not you are older than the acorn electron. So I'm just having to think of my feet here because I'm doing this different to how I did it the other day. So I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to, I'm sure there's probably another way to do this, but I'm going to establish some more variables now. Um, age difference? No, no, no. Wait a minute. What do I need? So I've got the year. We've established the year. We've established their age. We've established the acorn electrons age. Ah, so I know what we do. So if... Alec age equals equals um, if Alec age equals age print wow we are the same age. Eighty. If so, if they aren't the same, it's going to carry on. Um, if if um, a lek age is less than age, then then print. And this is where I want to get a little bit, a little bit different. Okay, so you are, so you are. <laughs> we just, oh, we're going to get this the wrong way around. I know I'm going to get this the wrong way around. So this is if elect age is less than age. So the person is older than the acorn electron, and we want to establish how much older the person is than the acorn electron at this point. So it's their age minus, so it's age. So you are age minus elect age. Age. And then years older than me okay and then we're going to do the reverse of that 
<laughs> this is going to be a long video. So at any stage, you're going to go, yep, yeah, I see where you're going. This is boring, whatever. But I'm just going to keep going until this program is finished. Um, and now I'm going to go if um, elect age. You see how all the programming, if one, one thing one thing out of place and it's just not going to work. Um, if elect age is greater than age, so the acorn electron is greater, then print. Oh no, I am. And then the difference again. I am. Um, so this is going to be the other way around. Elect age minus, and I've just noticed I've got a mistake on line 80. Elect age minus, minus age. Yeah, because I'm going the other way around. Um, years older than you. Okay. Um, so 80, I need to put a space in. So now I'm going to invite the possibility of another mistake. If elect age is less than age, then print. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay, so you... Age space minus space elect age years older than me. Right, that'll do. Right, let's see if that works. So, bang, and I'm just going to relist that. Um, and we're going to run that. Uh, what year is it? It's 2009. It's 2019. What is your name? My name is Chris, you very arrogant and forward computer. Hello, Chris. Nice to meet you. How old are you? Well, I'm today I'm pretending I'm 40. Okay, so you are four years older than me. There we go, which is right. Um, let's run it again. Well, I've been asleep a long time. What year is it? It's 2019. What is your name? My name is still Chris. Um, and how old are you? Let's say I'm one of my kids playing about on Dad's stupid Acorn Electron program. I'm 20. Oh no, I'm 16 years older than you. There we go, so it works. So the maths works. So all that faffing about. Now, um, what else did I play about with the other day? It's not nice for a program to just end because that's messy. Um, so we could just wait for some more input and then depend on what you're gonna do there. Um, so just to tidy it up really simply. Um, we could just say, that cat is annoying. He wants feeding all day. Um, 100. Um, input. Would you like to chat again? Um, and we'll call this end dollar. Okay. Um, if so, you can do this on a written statement as well. So if end dollar is equal to is equals um, equals equals if end dollar equals. Yes. Then go to 10. So it's going to loop round. Ah, oh, I haven't put a line number. Um, 110 if and dollar uh, dollar equals Different differences in keyboards. Um, 
yes. Then go to 10. 120, let's just um, do a bit of uh, possible troubleshooting here. We give them a couple of options. If end dollar equals why? Because they might just type why. So I have to allow for that as an option. Um, where's my thing? Then go to 10. So if it's either of them, we'll go to 10. If not, it's going to process whatever's next. I don't think you need to do an else. Does else come into this or is that when we get into more higher level languages? can't remember. Um, I think you can put it in the same line statement. Um, anyway, um, if uh, da, 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 we can just put print by by then, by then, and I've got to come back into quotes just to put a um stop in because you know punctuation and all that all right sorry for the rambling that should now work let's try that so run what year is it and you can see uh, again another thing you'd have to you'd, you'd run your program and then you go well the the, the screen formatting is a very nice so actually i'm going to put us what year is it on a second line and stuff like that you'd start messing about with all of that and again you've got to rewrite those lines to make that work what year is it um 2019 mate what is your name my name is chris hello chris nice to meet you how old are you i am 40 okay so you're four years older than me what would you like to do would you like to chat again and i've got a syntax error at line 100 <laughs> Ah, line 100, input, would you like to chat again? I did wonder that. I think end is, actually, I think end is actually an end. I think end means end. I'm pretty sure I can't use the term end is what I'm saying. It's a, it's a command in its own right. I did wonder that as I typed it, which means, guess what? I've got three bloody lines to retype um input and i just want to finish this so seriously if this is where you leave goodbye uh, but i'm going to keep going it won't take me long input would you like to chat again leave surely leave is not a thing leave dollar and then i'll go 110 if dollar uh, equals yes um, then go to 10 and you know what I'm gonna do line 120 I'm just gonna blat it <laughs> Okay, line 20 doesn't exist. That's how you delete a line. Um, you just fill it with nothing. Um, so if I read this now, line 20 does not exist. All right, I think that's going to work. I just couldn't be bothered typing the whole thing twice just to leave a caveat for the why thing. So, okay, let's run. Yes, it's still 2000. It might not be. Uh, but I'm pretending to be 40. Uh, yes, yes, I am. Would you like to chat again? We've got no syntax error now. Yes. So that would loop round. Okay, still 2019, mate. Ars. Hello, Ars. Nice to meet you. How old are you? I am. I am 40. Yes. Would you like to chat again? And I can type anything I want. No. Um. No such variable at line 130. What's the variable at line 130? Oh, because I know Chris. Should have been name. Should have been name dollar. You get the idea. I'm not going to keep going because we've been going for 34 minutes and I've written the crappiest program in the world ever. But my point here, look, just to end this. So if you have gone, I do apologise. Well, I don't need to because you're not here. Um, but... Um, 
what I find fascinating about this is how all this comes back. And look, with a bit of digging back into the, my distant memory, with BASIC, mainly with BASIC on the... Um, well, BASIC on the Acorn Electron, one of the things I did was I, I made a game, but it wasn't really a game. I just... It was basically creating ASCII art and then, and then a heap of asterisks going down like jet things. So I did an ASCII art rocket um, and then a heap of ASCII art jets going down that... Um, and then that went on forever, and then I looped the whole thing. So you go back to beginning, and I call I call my sisters up, and I'm like, oh, well, look, 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 I've made a game, I've made a game. I'd run it. This ship would draw itself and then shoot off the screen just because it was printing the ASCII art. Um, and then I'd say, right now, hit escape whenever you you want. And then they'd hit escape, um, and then um, I declared that basically whatever the line number was. <laughs> That was their score. And what they had to do was try and get it before the ship came around again because that would be the lowest score because it would be back to line 10. It, was, it wasn't a game at all. There was no scoring. Um, but it was it was quite hilarious. Um, so I didn't really get more seriously basic and doing like subroutines and stuff until um, uh, when I was working in IT and uh, uh, went on this. As soon as I discovered um, hacking tools like um, brute force attacks on password files and stuff like that. I went a bit on a bit of a, um, I don't know, a, a god mode as a systems admin and saying, right, everybody needs to have really complicated passwords and they must be random alphanumeric and I will declare what their passwords are and I will give them their passwords. Made it actually less secure because it meant I had a password list. But anyway, um, but um, and so I used QBasic on, on the PC or was it QBasic? I think so. Um, to write a randomization program basically to to um, uh uh, generate random passwords um, of over eight characters, and and the RIT supplier that we were using at the time actually um, asked for a copy of it because it was a simple enough program. What, why we invent the wheel? I said, oh yeah, we can make use of that, um, and they and they took that. But other than that, you know, I went from basic to at college doing Pascal and Cobol. Didn't really pay that much attention in that either, um, and then jumped. Um, Actually, after that, I went to another college, studying something completely different. But by that time, I had my brother's Amstrad notepad. Do you remember those? Um, if I get another one, I, that, that is a device I want to rebuy because that will be a cool thing to have. And if I get one, I'll talk more about that. But in that, I tried to make a text adventure game. So that was getting more into doing subroutines and, and go-to statements and go-subs and all that kind of thing. Um, so that was quite good. Um, and the only reason I didn't finish writing that text adventure game was because the damn Amstrad notepad didn't have enough memory. <laughs> I wiped everything. I wiped even my calendar events, um, everything out of that thing that I could possibly wipe to free up some more memory. Um, and it still didn't have enough memory for me to write a simple text adventure game in the inbuilt RAM. So that was... That was quite funny. Um, other than that, from there, I'd, I've done some action script. I've done a little bit of Java. But you know what it's like in this day and age. It's more a case of somebody else has built a project and we now to adapt, need to adapt it for a different purpose. So I do. I think I understand enough of code enough, um, especially things like Java. And I, the stuff I did in action script, I did from scratch. Um, but in terms of Java, it's always been looking at somebody else's code and working out how it works and then just changing the bits I need to change to make it work for a, for the new project and, and that kind of thing, which is good fun. I mean, that's another side. Um, and it follows the same principle from that day till till this of, you know, what, what happens, what, what, what is at the top happens first and what's at the bottom happens last unless you say otherwise. And that's the routine the machine follows unless you, you know, throw it to variables and routines and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's good. I mean, the, the basics are still the basics. Um, are still there. And the Acorn Electron, I'll chat more about that if I get one in, in my hand because um, we didn't have many games for ours. Um, but the games we did have, yeah, special place, I guess, up there. So if I ever find myself with one again, I'll we'll talk about some more of the games. And there's one um, that I just simply have to revisit and beat, and that would be Sphinx Adventure which was a text adventure game because I never beat it. Um, yeah, if I don't end up finding it and getting it, then I will actually go the length of just doing that through emulation because that will be interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching me struggle with this basic program. I will stop there. Thanks.